Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So in this chapter, we would be talking about enterprise applications. So enterprise applications are basically uh, applications or information systems that spans the whole company. Why do we need them? We need them because companies, of course, wants to attain operational excellence. They want to be excellent in the whole operation, starting from, let's say, uh, procurement, warehousing, manufacturing, uh, sales, marketing, finance, and so on. They want to be excellent in all of that. And also, they want to be more intimate, get more closer with their customers in order for their customers to become return customers, to go back again and again to buy the products that the company makes. Now, first, let's take a look at enterprise systems. So enterprise systems could be named with different names, like for instance, enterprise resource planning systems. But basically, the system is an integrated software and uses a common central database. So it takes data from different divisions and then uses it for all the business activities in a company. And once it is inputted into one part of a company, then it becomes available for other processes. So in short, it's integrated. It uses just one central database, which it's shared uh, with the whole company with several, uh, let's say, subparts of the system. And it's automatically accessible. Now here, for instance, you can see that the centralized databases would harbor, would store information or data from different divisions. You have the sales and marketing uh, division here having systems that manage orders, forecasting of sales, return requests, and price changes. Data from these functions would go into the central database and then it would be accessible by the finance and accounting division. For instance, uh, there's a customer that places an order and then pays for the order. Then the information, the data would go directly to the finance department. So the finance can update how much cash they have in hand right uh, at that time, how much customer credit is available, how much revenue is available at that time. Also, the manufacturing division would be able to uh, take a look at uh, how much stock is still available. And for instance, if there are sales forecast uh, that uh, sees in the future, in the near future, let's say next month, there would be an increase in demand, then the production schedule could be synchronized. Materials could be ordered as well. Production capacity could also be uh, modified and so on. And also the uh, labor that is used, for instance, the extended time that people are working and so on could also be recorded here. Okay. And it all stems from the centralized database. The data could come from either way. For instance, uh, you have a product that's ready to be uh, put into the warehouse that's ready made, then the data also goes into the centralized database. So the next time there's an order, the sales and marketing division can see that the product is available here. So it becomes quite simple, integrated, efficient. Now, enterprise software uh, would be using the best practice in the various business processes in the company. Of course, the company has to select which functions that is needed. So they wouldn't want to, uh, what, what they call scope creep, meaning that the system 
always scripts expands all the time and adds more and more functions. At first, you have to prioritize. At least you have to uh, find out what is the scope of the system? What functions would the system be serving? And then you would be uh, trying to find out the business processes that are needed for the development of the software. Now, from a company's perspective, making an information system would always be taken a look at the, from the business perspective. How is it useful for the company? It might be, for instance, to increase operational efficiency because then uh, the company has less bottleneck. The company is able to forecast how much is needed and they can produce uh, at an accurate pace. And then it would be, it could be supporting decision-making. It might be aiming for uh, giving a rapid response to customer requests, or it might be used to analyze the performance of the company. So these are the possible business value of enterprise systems. Now, an example of an enterprise system, remember an, a system that is integrated between the divisions in a company is supply chain management systems. Another one that we would also be talking about is customer relationship management systems. What is supply chain? A supply chain is a network of organizations and processes. Uh, for instance, you might have your suppliers or your suppliers is suppliers or your distributors, your, the retailers that would be selling your products and so on. Those are networks of organizations. It also could be networks of processes because business processes could span, could cross over different organizations. You might have a business process that connects you with the supplier or you with your distributor. And then there are upstream supply chains and downstream supply chains. What are those? Upstream supply chains are the supply chains uh, that connect you with your suppliers. For instance, in Nike, uh, they have, let's say, the sole of uh, the shoe, the bottom part of the shoe. Uh, they, they have a supplier there. That's the tier one supplier. This supplier might be uh, getting the rubber from a rubber company so the rubber company is the second tier or tier two suppliers. And then the rubber companies might be getting the raw materials of rubber from a rubber plantation, a rubber farm. Uh, this is the tier three suppliers. This is upstream. And then uh, when you talk about the upstream supply chain, you would be talking about the capacity of your suppliers the inventory level that is needed in your company, in your warehouse, as well as in your suppliers is uh, production capacity, delivery time, how long it takes for the supplier to send the materials to your company, uh, and how do you pay the suppliers, and when do you have to pay your suppliers, the payment terms. And then downstream supply chain would be the distributors, retailers, and customers that your company has. So it could be about orders. Uh, when a customer or a retailer orders uh, goods, it would be sent to the distributor. The distributor would be uh, sending that information to, the, uh, to your company, to Nike. It might be return requests. Uh, repairs, service requests, payments, and so on. These are what is uh, concerned with the downstream supply chain. Now, supply chain management, of course, would be how to manage that supply chain. And it's very important because uh, inefficiencies is a main theme in supply chain. And in the operating expenses of a company, waste could 
comprise 25% of the expenses. One strategy that you, can, that you can use to lower the waste to make the operations more efficient is using just-in-time strategy, which means, the, for instance, if you have a factory, then the raw materials would go into the factory just at the exact time the factory needs that uh, material. So it doesn't even have to go to the warehouse. And then components arrive as they are needed. And then the finished goods, when your factory finishes making a product, that product doesn't go to the warehouse either, but that product would be automatically delivered to the distributors and then to the retailers and so on. But sometimes you would need safety stock. So safety stock is used just in case there's a disruption in the supply chain. For instance, you, one of your suppliers could not meet the demand that you gave them. Then uh, you still have some stock uh, of materials that you can use to produce uh, the items you are making. Now, that's also what we call a bull whip effect. So this is about this distortion of demand information which would be passed from one supply chain to the next, which would uh, impact the efficiency of the supply chain, like this, for instance. You can see here where uh, the demand from the customer is uncertain. It might be going up, it might be going down. And then, of course, the retailer would be trying to uh, provide goods in their stores, which exceeds the demand of the customer. They do not want the customer to go to the store and not find that product. So they would be providing more products than is needed. In that case, the distributor would be also ordering more products than is needed by the retailers. The manufacturer would be making more and also the supplier uh, tier one, tier two and tier three suppliers. So you can see here, the tier two suppliers would be making products twice the times that is actually needed, or maybe almost three times that is actually needed. And this is inefficiency. So the used products is only one third of the actual number of products that's, that is made by the suppliers. And uh, this is the Bullwick effect. and using supply chain management uh, software, you would be hopefully able to uh, create a picture of the accurate demand that is needed. So you would be avoiding this bulb whip effect because uh, accurate information is given to the whole supply chain up to the supplier. So they do not have to make more supplies than is needed. Okay, this is uh, supply chain management software. It could be supply chain planning systems. It could be supply chain execution systems. Planning systems include uh, uh, modeling the existing supply chain, include demand planning, optimization, uh, establishing the correct inventory levels about transportation modes while the execution systems would be more on the distributions of products. And there's an issue about the global supply chain. So now companies are not just uh, making, uh, getting their supplies from local companies, but the supplies might, might come from the global market. You can imagine a computer company like Hewlett Packard. They might be sourcing or getting the hard disks from uh, let's say Malaysia, while well, the company is in the United States for instance. And then uh, they might be getting their random access memory from Indonesia. Some other parts, the, the chips might be from 
uh, Intel, some might be made in China as well, and so on. So uh, the distance is huge, it spans the globe. And then the time differences are also different working times. Also the standards and legal requirements in each country is also different. Now the internet would be helping those complexities at a global arena about warehousing, transportation, logistics, outsourcing. And then there are two types of supply chain management models. You have a push base model, which is built to stock, meaning that if you run out of stock in the warehouse, then you would be ordering the products and the products are made to replenish, to fill in the warehouses. Uh, this is the old SCM models. And then the new ones would be the pool base model. So production is based on demand, not just to uh, fill in the stock, but based on the actual demand from the customers. So it might be web-based and it's actually data from the customers that you are uh, referencing. And then you can have also rather than sequential or linear supply chains, you can have concurrent or uh, parallel supply chains. You have supply chains working uh, at the same time, not linear like this. Now this is the push-based model. So in this case, the manufacturer would be filling the infantry and ordering from the supplier to fill the infantry. And then they would be sending the, uh, sending the goods to the distributors, retailers, and customers. But the new model would be pool-based model in which the customers would be placing the demand. The demand from the customer would be related to the retailer, distributor, manufacturer, and supplier. So in this sense, uh, this is more efficient. And then uh, you would be uh, more probable to avoid the bulb whip effect as well. So uh, the pulpis model is make what we sell, not sell what we make. Well, the old model is uh, make, uh, sell what you make. This is make what you sell. And you can see here, uh, because of the internet, the supply chain is not just linear like we saw before, but it connects the different uh, entities, the different companies that are in the supply chain. So you have uh, before you only had suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, retailers, customers. Now logistics providers are also in the loop, also in the network. You have the industries, you have logistics exchanges done here also. So it becomes a wider network than before. Now you also would have companies thinking of the benefits of supply chain management systems for those companies. This is the business value. And from a management perspective, we also, uh, we mostly have to think about the business value of the systems that we would be making. The business value would be to match supply and demand and to reduce infantry levels. This is very important because in, uh, keeping infantry is expensive. You have to prepare a warehouse. You have to pay the electricity for the warehouse. You have to pay for the security of the warehouse. So if you don't have any infantry or you just have a little infantry, it would reduce cost. If you can match supply and demand, so you won't have much infantry. Improving delivery service and uh, increasing speed product time to market would mean that uh, you don't need infantry of finished goods. It would also mean that the customers are also uh, more happy, more satisfied, and you can use your assets more effectively. And you can see here, uh, supply chain can consist of 75% of the whole operating budget. And of course, hopefully you can increase sales. 
So that was supply chain management. Now we would be quickly talking about customer relationship management systems. So what is CRM? It's about knowing the customers. Who are your customers? If it's a small company, you might be able to directly meet the customers. You know firsthand you cut your customers. But if it's a large company, you have thousands, tens of thousands of customers, you couldn't interact directly with them. So you would need a CRM system to capture and integrate customer data from all over the organization. So from all entry points, we'll take a look at that later on. You would want to uh, put together, consolidate all the data, analyze the data, and then distribute that data to various parts of the company and provide a single enterprise view of customers. So it goes like this. So this is the customer, but the customer could be seen from the marketing perspective. The marketing department would be interacting with the customer when they have a marketing campaign. They might be going to the mall, uh, they might be, uh, the customer might be going to the mall and they might be signing up for something. And then uh, it might be about uh, a website that the customer could go to and the content could be analyzed. Or the customer might be interacting with the sales department. The sales department would be calling the customers through phone. Maybe the customer would be uh, buying something through e-commerce, through website, or through the retail shops, the physical shops, or maybe it's a field sales. They buy something uh, from uh, an exposition, an expo. And all these would give data to the company. The customer would interact and there would be data going into the company. Also when the company, after the, the customer buys something and then they need help using the products that you sold, then they would be calling the uh, call center. It might be through the web, it might be uh, through social networking uh, communications and so on. So you have data from different parts of the company as seen here, the CRM would be integrating all those data and then it would be analyzing so you can get a single view of the customer not just the few from sales, from marketing, from service, but the whole integrated profile of the customer could be seen using the CRM. Uh, there could be partner relationship management systems in which you would be, uh, for instance, working with uh, a chain of companies, the, the partners. You might be having a CRM with your logistics partners, for instance. Uh, there might be also employee relationship management systems which would regard your employee as customers and it would for instance uh, be taking a look at the profile of your employees their performance for instance that's a variation of a crm now a typical crm would have salesforce automation so for instance uh, when you get a call uh, uh, which offers you to uh, get an insurance, for instance, or offers you credit. So uh, the person that calls you, the salesperson that calls you would be using a Salesforce automation system in which they get to know who to call and they might know your name. They might uh, also know your preference because they chose you uh, not randomly but the system chooses the customer to uh, contact based on uh, the customer profile. It could be, uh, there could also be a customer service tool. There could also be a marketing tool in the CRM uh, package. Now you can see that uh, eventually more and more promotion is done, uh, let's say from web, email and social media. Well now, uh, direct mail and telephone is still uh, abundantly used. This is another way of seeing it. So the customer data comes from sales, marketing and services. From sales, it 
is uh, connected to several uh, different systems under sales, also under marketing and under service. And this is about uh, trying to uh, gauge, trying to measure the value of a customer. So you would be trying to find out a customer that has high value and high loyalty, and then providing with special service. If you don't have that, if a customer is not high value and high loyalty, then you might assign a, spe a specific person or agent to uh, engage and try to persuade the customer to become uh, loyal customers. You have operational CRM and you have analytical CRM. Operational ones are used for Salesforce automation, call centers, and so on, while analytical CRMs would be analyzing customer data using, for instance, online analytical processing, uh, processing multi-dimensional data. It would also be used data mining. And the goal would be to find the customer lifetime value. So what's the value of a customer throughout their lifetime? You can imagine that if it's a young customer, uh, they have a longer lifetime in front of them, the, the value might be higher. Uh, also, if there's a customer that, that buys more products, the lifetime value of that customer would also be higher. Here you can see in another way, uh, the different channels of data input would be put into the data warehouse and uh, process, and all the data would be processed using different methods. Now, uh, once again, the company would be thinking about the business value it might be about increased customer satisfaction, uh, about uh, lowering costs, making it more effective, about increasing sales. And another one would be about churn rate. A uh, churn rate is uh, the number of customers who stop using products. You would want to lower the churn rate of uh, your customers. Now, uh, talking back about enterprise applications, these are the different challenges that would arise from using enterprise systems. It might be too expensive, uh, technology might change, the, your business process might change, it needs uh, the staff, the employees needs to learn how to use the system. Switching costs, if you are using from a specific vendor might be high, the cost of switching to a different system might be high and you would need data standardization cleansing, management, and so on. Now there are some uh, next generation applications. So like using uh, enterprise suites, using new standards, open standards, uh, cloud-based versions. Uh, now specifically this cloud-based version, which uh, you don't have to really worry about data synchronization because you just subscribe to one vendor and choose, for instance, to uh, use one part of it first. And then later on, when your business grows, you can uh, subscribe to a, a more complete version without one wondering, worrying about uh, the data. You might uh, think in the future about social CRM and also using business intelligence for CRM. So that, uh, that covers several topics actually about enterprise applications, SCM and CRMs. And of course, this is just a start to get to know about these types of systems. Thank you very much and wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.